say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Well, hello, Mrs. Farmer. Hello. How are Mom. you tonight? I'm really good, thanks. We got a we got a packed show. We got something new behind us. Beautiful. You hear that? It's the sound of nature. Mm -hmm. Now, there's not a spring coming out of the hill. This is not natural, but it sure feels natural. Sure right. looks natural, and we like to surround ourselves with nature. It seems like any time that we have birds singing, like I see a cardinal right over there, or fish flopping around in the background, water sounds, it just is very peaceful. You could do this in the city too. Regardless of where you live, you can yeah. bring a water feature in. If you walk in the woods, you see a hickory tree. Mm -hmm. You know it's a hickory tree. There's a chink of pin oak. Right. We had Rick on to talk about nature. He knows there's trees. Trees. Without leaves on, mm -hmm. you can say, hey, there's such and such. Now, recently, a friend of mine on Facebook, he's in Western Kentucky. Now, he's a retired game warden, conservation officer. His name's Jeff Finn. And we did our little series on recognizing birds at right. the bird feeder. Remember, we had the run of the mill birds. That's right. Jeff's sending pictures of grosbeaks, Baltimore Orioles, these beautiful birds that are traveling right. through on their migration route. And I said, man, how in the world? Pileated woodpecker. <laughs> Isn't that neat to know the sound yeah. of nature around you? So he shows us a, a picture of these, all these birds he's posting on Facebook. I said, I gotta visit him, I gotta see how he does this. Right. And we also pulled a little fishing trip out as well. You had fun, didn't you? Yeah, we got some bluegill to boot. And we're going to fry them up tonight. We're going to show you a few secrets about frying fish that just might make you the most popular fish fryer in your neighborhood. That's right. So let's go visit our new friend Jeff and check out some birds. Then we'll come back and fry some fish. Yeah. We're in Logan County today. Jeff Finn, retired fish and wildlife. Yes. I'm kind of like that too. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> you are a naturalist. You love nature. And I did a little thing on birds. Until I saw your pictures, <laughs> I thought, man, he's beating me up. <laughs> and I thought I really wanted to share some of the things. You know, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, again, is a show about not just cooking and not just the farm and things that come to the kitchen, but sometimes we look out the kitchen window. We want to be familiar with nature. We want to look at that tree and say, I think I know what that is. We want to know some edible plants. When you go into the woods and you walk into the woods and you hear a bird or you see a bird, it's not just a bird, it's a particular kind of bird. Right. What you have out here, now these cats, you're in the, you're in the flyway. <laughs> yeah, they're, must be. They're on their way somewhere else. Let's talk about, um, first of all, what you started seeing out here and then how you started wanting to attract them. You can take the rose-breasted grosbeak, for beautiful example. Beautiful bird. Beautiful bird. I had never seen one myself up until a few years ago and I've watched birds my whole life. The reason I had not is usually when we fed birds, it was during the winter time, you know, you put snow and the seeds. There's no rose-breasted grosbeaks beaks around here in the you winter time. You see the typical same things we were right. seeing, chickadees mm -hmm. and, the, and the junco. The, the gross beaks come here about the same time the hummingbirds come here in, in April. And so if you don't have sunflower seeds out in April, you don't See, see those birds. Right. And I started finding, you know, it's the same thing with other species. If you've got the right thing out at the right time, you're going to see it. You're starting to put things out that I wasn't thinking about. Jelly. Right. What kind of jelly? Does it matter? Well, what I've put out is grape jelly. Last year, I've been seeing where, you know, some people attracted Baltimore Orioles with oranges. And so I put out the the oranges and fixed up something last year and I saw a few way high across the pond 
didn't think much about it to this year and walked in the living room one day and there was a Baltimore Oriole on, on the hummingbird feeder. I quickly got out here, started putting out the oranges again and I'd heard the, they were also attracted to grape jelly. And so I put some grape jelly out and for the last few weeks, I've probably had as many as eight to 10 Baltimore wow. Orioles here. And that's, that's, that's been a lot of fun for a guy who's watched birds his whole life and never seen them before. When I started putting out the oranges for the Oreos, I looked and I've got summer tanagers coming to these oranges each day. And so I'm not normally have summer tanagers come to any feeder and now I've got a summer tanager sitting there just right Another outside beautiful. my window. Yeah, beautiful Bird. birds. Here with the water, uh, I see a lot of water birds, but not, not open water birds, not like marshes. This is more the hill countries. I get a lot of wood ducks coming in put up a wood duck box and they've never nested in it but yet I have one of the red phase screech owls in it each winter and so wow. and so she's become popular on Facebook I, we've named her Rosie and she sticks her head out of the wood duck box each winter and made some pictures of her but just a lot of different birds coming to the to the water like that I remember seeing uh, recently an indigo bunny yes and I said look at that Somebody said it's a bluebird. I said, well, yeah, it's, it's a bluebird. Was, no, it's just a regular bluebird. There's no such, I'm like, I'm just going to stop. Yeah. It's a different little it's, fella. He's deep, dark blue. He's beautiful. And you seeing those around here too? Yes, I have those. They're in the cypress trees quite a bit. I've had quite a few of them come in recently. You've got your, your blue indigo bunnings. I have blue grosbeaks, beaks, which is just a little bit larger than indigo bunting and looks a lot like them. A lot of people will see a blue gross beak and think it's an indigo bunting. And then I've got a bluebird house over here with the regular bluebirds. So there's, there's quite a few different bluebirds around here. Living in the woods like this, I have a lot of thrushes. I have the, the woods thrush that you may hear on this video. He sings loud and pretty. He just quit, just as soon as we start talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had hermit thrushes that come down here. I've had pictures of those. A lot of thrushes, a lot of different fly catchers. I've got the, the Phoebe. I've had the great crested fly catcher. I've had the Acadian fly catcher nested in the woods down here last year. And so I'm seeing fly catchers that I've, I've never seen before also. I've got barred owls that nest over here uh, near me and uh, I've got you a video of them at two different times. I don't know what they're doing, but it looks like they're making out, they're kissing. There's two owls that sit there and just keep doing this. So I've got you a video, I just called it Barred Owls Kissing. We'll have to make sure that we don't have to change the ratings on yeah. the show. We might have to go to like a PG-13. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And do you just sit inside and take your pictures? Or? Uh huh. Yeah. I. Uh, my recliner kind of faces <laughs> the window. Somebody says, how do you get these pictures? And I say, well, I get out of my recliner, I ease over to the window and I raise it up and I take a picture. <laughs> that's about it. Well, you can't beat that sitting in a recliner. Just... Yeah. Now, that's the most expensive ground blind uh, I've ever that's seen. That's right. <laughs> it is. I never thought about the recliner. I'm going to get me a recliner and pull yeah. in the kitchen. <laughs> it's pretty nice. <laughs> Thank you, man. All right now, we need some fried fish. That's right. We're gonna have that tonight, and we're gonna catch those in a little while, but first, shrimp and grits. Yum. We know where to get fresh seafood. Yeah, we do. Went to the truck the other day, a lot of people there. A lot of li big line. We had to stay in line yeah. a little bit, but we got our shrimp. We're gonna make some shrimp and grits. Fantastic, wonderful, nothing to it. First thing we're gonna do is start our liquid parts. We're gonna take two cups of chicken broth, two cups of milk, just regular 2% milk like you'd mm -hmm. like to drink. I'm gonna go three quarter. We need more. I like butter. Butter's good. Especially with shrimp and grits. Yeah. Then we're gonna put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Then we're gonna take some blackened seasoning. Not a whole lot. Now, you remember we made that? That's right. Your homemade. Our, our homemade stuff. Now, Paul Prudhomme, who to me was one of the best Cajun chefs in the world, he actually had some of his stuff out there on PBS. He gave the recipe out to his yeah. blackened seasoning that they were using on the, the drum at the time. So that's out there. We put it out there and you can make that yourself and it's absolutely wonderful out of fresh stuff. Now we're gonna bring that to a boil, then we're gonna put our grits in there. Yeah. So they start to swell up. So after that gets nice and thick, you're gonna put about a cup of 
cheddar cheese. We got some sharp cheddar yeah, cheese. And I can eat it just like that. Uh huh. And again, a little salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of blackened seasoning, just okay. enough to when you stir it up in the butter, you see a little bit of that blackened seasoning in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Then you're gonna set that aside. And then we're gonna come back with our skillet. We're gonna do some bacon, six, seven pieces of bacon. We're gonna cook that down. We're gonna set it aside. We're gonna take our drippings. We're gonna take about a half of a small onion, two or three pieces of garlic. We're gonna chop those up in your little chopper. Okay. We're gonna saute that. We're gonna put just a little bit of more blackened seasoning, probably about a half a teaspoon in that. See where I'm, I'm, I'm going with this? Yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready, that? I'm ready. So we're gonna take our shrimp, which have been shelled and deveined. And to me, these raw reds, what do they taste like, Miggy? Lobster, they're delicious. Little baby lobsters? Yeah, they are lobsters. They're I should probably try one. Wonderful. If you want me to try one to make sure they're good, try, well, You want to let them I'm cook a little one. bit more. Now you want to cook these just till they're firm and pink. You don't want to overdo your shrimp. When you're done, you set your shrimp with your bacon pieces and all that sauteed wonderful stuff, your onions and your garlic, Yum. on top of the grits, and boom, what have you got? Shrimp and grits. That's what I'm Yum. talking about, and it's absolutely delicious. Now earlier, this waterfall noise and these fish, all this stuff was, this guy's responsible for it. This beautiful noise. We're gonna see kinda how he did that in a minute. But first, Andrew and Andrea are with us tonight. They're gonna sample our food. Then we're gonna show how you make the waterfall. So dig in. See what you think. That's good. Yum. As I always say, yum. Wow. Oh, Not too much delicious. butter, Nikki? Not enough. No, it's perfect. No such thing as it. It's perfect. No, it's creamy. It's, yep. it's very creamy. Mmm. This is delicious. I tried mm. the grits first, just out of curiosity. Look good. Without the shrimp and stuff. Man, oh man, I could eat a pile of that. The shrimp's <laughs> delicious. It's all delicious. It is delicious. Mm -hmm. the, the grits are creamy. Good. Mm. <laughs> but you know what? First, Let's take a look a little earlier while we're down here setting up. Again, we talked about how we get some nice nature sounds in the background. And those fish are getting nervous because they smell <laughs> seafood in the air. Right. It's okay, guys. Right. It's okay, guys. Let's see how we did that. All right, now this whole show, we've been talking about nature. Nature sounds, being surrounded by nature. You know, when we cook outside, Andrew, uh, we get nature around us. This is the way I grew up. It's the only way I understand. And when I have water sounds, when I see fish, when I see birds, it seems to me like my blood pressure just drops. So you're, you could be like a doctor, a therapist, <laughs> per right. se. You're from Indiana. Right. Andrew Johnson. And I looked you up, found you at a trade show. Right. And I said, let's, let's do this thing. I had one that was poorly built by myself. And I asked you what we need to do to get this thing going. Now, the reason we have this is because when we show our cooking, I want people to feel that same thing that we're feeling with nature in the background. You've done a bunch of these. What's it take to do one of these? A lot of patience, yeah. probably. <laughs> how much do you envision it and how much do you let it happen? I try to let the rocks just kind of do and tell me where they want to be. Mm -hmm. um, I try not to force anything because, right. you know, trying to place them back in the ground like they came out of the ground right? and go together how they want to go together. And it truly, how many people have you talked to where it says they think it's probably a health issue? It, <laughs> it helps them out. Right. Uh, probably just about everybody after they've lived with it for a little while and, and uh, just gives them a better way of life, you know? You saw this situation down here. What was, the, what was the thought in your mind when you saw this average job? more complicated because we had to work within what was already here right. so we had to remove some things and um, typically we're digging a hole but we already had the hole to work with so right. we had to kind of work inside out well right now you and i are going to sit back and we're going to watch in really fast motion how this thing came together I want to thank you for having this as our backdrop. And now, would you stay for dinner? Of course. We got fish. We got, well, I can't tell them everything. We got a good meal. Thank you very much. Thank you. You still hungry? I could always eat. That makes you full, but I'll eat again. All right, on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Mm -hmm. It's all about 
going out, getting our food, right. raising it. Um, sometimes the things that we have we trade or barter with. Mm -hmm. Elmwood Stock Farm, those onions we put on our shrimp and grits. Delicious. Grown right on his farm in Georgetown. Right. We're gonna have some fish, but in order to have fish, you gotta catch them. That's right. So earlier, when we were visiting our buddy in Logan County, we decided to take a little trip and catch a few fish. You had fun, didn't you? Beautiful day, <laughs> beautiful pond, and beautiful hand-sized bluegill. Now look at that bug, that's just a popper. It's just a cork-bodied popper. When they're on the nest and they see something they think is trying to eat their eggs, or if they're hungry, they can't resist. Just lay it right over top of there. This is about a number five rod, five weight line. That's exactly what we're looking for. Male bluegill. Look how fat he is. Now if you're looking for bluegill on the nest, you'll see a lot of activity on top of the water, like back in this corner. A lot of stuff going on over here. I bet there's a big old dome head male in there somewhere. Oh, now that wasn't messing around right there. I'm pulling the boat. That one you can fillet. Look at that. Now that is a bluegill. It wouldn't take many of them to make a mess right there. Wow. Now the birds might have been something you look out the window, kitchen window for, but these are gonna be in the kitchen shortly. There's nothing better than fresh bluegill, I don't think, anywhere. Now you notice I'm not staying up in there. I'm getting up in there, I'm getting one, I'm getting out. You don't wanna get right up on them or you spook them. Oh! <laughs> All right, I believe I got another decent one on here by the way it's pulling. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Healthy fish, pretty fish. Man, oh man. I heard some more flopping going on back over there. Look at that. It's a fat one. I'm gonna try not to get them too stirred up, catch a few more out of there. It's a big fish. See that activity under that tree over there? All that movement in that water? Uh-huh, that's a bluegill. What size is that right there? See that? can catch these all day long. I'm not abusing this hole. I've been privileged to be here for a short while. I got about 10 or 12 fish. That's two pieces of meat per. One for Nikki, one for me. That'll be the last one to go in the cooler. This is El Baguero.
Here's a few secrets about frying fish that you need to keep in mind. If you have a fried daddy like this and you're using them, instead of propane, so on and so forth, if you look at your temperature gauge that you set on here, we won't mention name brands or anything right. like that because they're all about the same. If you set this, say, on 215 and you put a candy thermometer in here, or Kelly says she actually uses a laser sometimes, yeah. you'll find sometimes 20, 30 degrees difference wow. in temperature. So you do not want to go, I don't ever go above 350 degrees with my oil. It could start right. to burn. So I start cooking at about 320. And you'll see the temperature go down a little bit if you've got some really cold stuff. Yeah. But I really like to keep it around now. You don't want to just burn it up. I'm going to show you, should I show my secret? I don't know, you sure? It's, it's pretty amazing. Something happens when you have a cornmeal fish batter cornmeal and flour, you can right. go half and half, three quarters one, three quarters that, depends on how you want to do it. You can buy a pre-mixed one, but there's a secret to begin all this whole process. Now, you're saying, I don't like mustard. You're not going to taste the mustard. It'll give it just a little bit of, just a little bit of bite. It's nothing it's bad at all. It makes it really good. I'm going to use equal parts. Now, this is not a real hot sauce. It's a salsa picante. It's a, this is a tapatio. I've used that for years. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to mix it up. Now the bluegill didn't last long, so we got some catfish out. But this will work with any type of fish that, you, if, that you're using a dry batter on. So I'm going to take my pieces of fish. Again, the bluegill didn't last long, so we right. took some catfish that we caught. We're going to take this out and we're going to just roll it lightly in equal parts mustard and hot sauce. Then we're going to take it and put it in our dry batter. Then we're going to drop it in the hot oil. We're going to re-release the fish. Okay. It's catch and release. <laughs> and we're going to let it go until it browns and floats. You know, it has a tendency when you first put it in right. the sink. But you'll know about, uh, you know, it doesn't take very long, four or five minutes maximum. You'll know by looking at it. All right, here we okay. are. Look at that. Golden brown. Beautiful. Just look at that color. Is that That's not good. beautiful? Mm -hmm. And somebody out there saying, look at the bugs flying around. <laughs> well, that's what happens at night. Mm -hmm. They don't bother us. In fact, if they get in the way, we might just eat them. That's right. You go ahead and I'll watch. I ain't scared. All right. All right. Look at that beautiful brown, golden. That looks really good. Catfish. I like to make them my catfish in little mm -hmm. chunks. I don't want a big honking piece of catfish. I like a piece wow. of this size. Try it and see what's going on. It's a little bit hot. Mm. I love your coating. You like it? It's really good. Does it make you happy? That's your secret coating, isn't it? I like that. Mm. Wow. It's really good. Oh, wow. You know what? If you saw the show and you thought, hey, I'd like to try that recipe, well, more than likely, right after we take this off the air, we put it on timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Right. We got 80, 100,000 gazillion recipes wow, over that's there. A lot. Take a look over there, hit subscribe. Mm -hmm. That way, we'll send you a notice when something new comes out. If you want to be our Facebook friend, how would you do that? You go on and hit like. Like, that's it. You know what? A half hour's up. It's that's over. It, it, was a, it was a really fun show. We were all over the place. Now we have to eat. That's right. This is our Andrew and Andrew. They sitting look right hungry. Over there. They, look, they look hungry. hungry. They got to try some of this fish. It's all about good times. Good friends. You really good eats. You did good. Catfish. Good stuff. See you next week on a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck@gmail.com.